are here. I think it's awesome that you get to take all these different art classes and that you guys get to go to galleries and learn about all, the, all these like things that happen in the world in the arts and that you're interested in it. I was interested in the arts too when I was little. I remember when I was a lot littler than you, I remember being in elementary school and you know we had to do a thing that said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And at that time, I don't think there still is, but there was the symbol of an artist, and it was this guy who wore a French beret, and he had a painting palette on his thumb. Have you ever seen this? Does that still exist? I don't know. But he was like this painter, French guy, and he had a brush. And I just remember being like a little person and thinking, yeah, that looks like the best thing to do. You know, you get to make make a lot of different things and make sort of like make your own world, and that seems way more interesting. So. I, th I do think it's kind of like you just, you're just kind of born that way. You enjoy making stuff. Um, it's kind of magical and in you get to do what you're interested in. So that's one of my favorite things about being an artist is it's like if you love whales, you can make your art about whales, you know? Or if you love cars and speed and technology and that sort, you can make your art about that. Or if you love math, you can make your art about math. It's like. Being an artist is you can apply, you can, you get to just keep going into what you're interested in, you know? So, uh, so that's pretty special. Um, I like to draw. I've always liked to draw the most. That was my main thing. Do you guys like to draw? Anybody? Yeah. It's pretty natural. Like ever since you're little, you have crayons, you know? <laughs> so, um, so I always like to draw. And then later when I was in college, I started doing printmaking. Have you guys ever done printmaking? A little bit? Cool. Maybe lino, cut, lino cuts and stuff. Um, Meryl's a printmaker, a really good printmaker also. So, um, so even when I was like, you know, 18 or 19, I liked to do drawing and printmaking together. Like I liked putting different things together. And so they call that mixed media. Do you, do you guys ever run into that term mixed media? before you have already. I teach college and some of my students don't know what mixed media is. So good for you. <laughs> it means you like to do a bunch of different things, you know? And I was thinking about why I like mixed media so much. Like in my like in this little I call it a drawing, but really there's paper collage. I use paint. I use colored pencils. I use string. Um, this is, have you ever seen those little wood burning tools? Like, you know? So I use the wood burning tool and burn the paper. Sometimes I scratch the paper. I use typewriter. Um, I, I will sit in my, at, I have a studio at home in my basement, you know? It's all set up with big tables and like stuff on the walls that I can pin paper to. And I have all these different things like paints and you know, like printmaking stuff and drawing stuff and collaging stuff and all these different things around. And sometimes I think, why don't I just like to do one thing? Like some people, they just need a pencil, you know, but I always need a hundred things. And I think the reason I like mixed media is because you have to like think of a new way to do something every time. You don't get bored. Do you ever have one thing you like to draw, like one special thing, and you draw it over and over and over and you're really good at it and you can do it in two seconds, you know what I mean? And it's nice, but it's also kind of boring because you've done it a whole bunch of times. So when, you, when I work in mixed media, I like that I can um, always, think of a, always think of a new way to do it, a new tool. It makes me, makes me think through everything again, so it's all brand new every time. So that's the reason I think I like mixed media. Um, by the way, if you ever have any thoughts or questions or comments or anything, just shout it out or raise your hand or whatever. So um, this art exhibit that I did with Akron Soul Train is called Correlate or Correlate. There's a little poster with the word on there. So correlate the word, it means um, things that affect each other or are dependent on each other when things are correlated. It's kind of a science term. And that little equal sign that looks like two swervy lines in there, um, that means approximately equal to, similar, not exactly the same, but, but, but they're pretty much the equivalent of each other. So um, I called it that because um, in my own art, and as we walk around and I talk about it, I'll show you, I like to make things come together and then make things overlap and then sometimes make things falling apart. You know, sometimes I make things fall off the page or whatever. 
um, things coming together and things going apart. And, um, and so for this project, what I did, so it's kind of like attaching things and then detaching things all the time. So for this project, what I did was I got a whole bunch of people to submit, like on the wall over here, a whole bunch of personal shares, I call them. So everybody wrote to me either in person on pieces of paper or online. I had a website set up. Times they felt when they were connected, you know, like felt like they were uh, safe and together, you know, with people or things or life or whatever. And then times they felt disconnected, like alone or isolated because everybody feels all that stuff all the time. But no, we don't really talk about it all the time. And, uh, and part of the reason I did that was I wanted, like in this title, Correlate, I wanted everybody to think like that everybody's kind of the same. We're not exactly the same at all. But we can relate to each other, like times when people feel connected or disconnected. So I teach college, and some of these are shares from my students, you know? Someone wrote, connected with friends, with my family, with my cats, you know? And then some, I feel connected when I sit alone with trees. And then this person feels disconnected when they sit alone. Or um, someone feels disconnected when they think about the mistakes they've made, you know? So it's sort of like, when I would read all these shares, and I got a bunch of them, like somewhere around 250, uh, it really made me feel connected to everybody. So, um, so in the art, I just what I did with these mixed media drawings is I glued, I typed those out on this old typewriter I had, and then I glued them into the drawings. So each drawing has my stuff in it, my drawings, and then included in there are these collaged in glued on pieces of paper with typed out shares from people. So, um, so that's what the paper pieces are. And then these uh, envelopes on strings are more shares, things people wrote. Um, when I felt my baby's first kick, that would be somebody felt really connected or uh, like, oh, and this one, needing a car to access basic services. So somebody who doesn't have a car and they maybe can't get to the doctor or the grocery store is an American disconnect. They feel disconnected. So with some of the shares, I just put them in these envelopes and strung them together and hung them around. So we can talk about that in a minute anyways. But let's walk around and take a look at some of the art. So I make my art intuitively. Have you, any of your teachers ever said anything to you like, oh, being an intuitive artist, have you ever heard that term before? No, okay. Thanks for answering. I love when people just answer me or nod or whatever. It makes it so much easier to, to know that people you know, are listening or that they thinking, they're thinking about it. So anyway, um, what it means is I make art about what I feel. Like that's what it means. Like sometimes you go to make something, maybe a poem or music or anything, and you think I'm going to make this about you know, a, a subject. I'm going to draw a picture of a rose. And you plan it out and you draw that picture. So that's one way of making art. And another way is sort of intuitive. So in my art, I intuitive means, like to me anyway, it means that um, if I have a feeling, like say I feel a little lost and disorganized you know, in my head, then I just start drawing lines that look kind of lost and disorganized. And then, or if something's really upsetting me, you know, and I feel really upset, maybe I make really dark marks like this. Um, Sometimes I'll draw things, you know, like not in this one is exactly, but this is kind of a mountain shape. There was this mountain that I lived near that I thought that made me feel really safe and grounded. So I made all these paper mountains and I would glue them into work. Um, but uh, so what I do in my drawings is like anytime I have anything that I'm thinking about or that's going on in me, I'll make a mark for it or a glue piece of paper on the page for it. And then and then I do a response to it. I'll look at that and I'll think, what does that make me think of? How does that make me feel? And so then I'll, I'll follow that up with more marks. So in that way, I just kind of go back and forth and that's how I build my work. My art is a lot of times abstract. Do you guys, are you familiar with abstract art, right? Like art that doesn't look like anything recognizable like a person or a tree. So most of my art is pretty abstract, although sometimes you can find things in there like stairs or clouds or whatever. 
But, um, but I like to mix it up. I like things to look kind of real and kind of not real. Also, and there will be all these crazy things like a piece of graph paper or dots, you know, or, or things that aren't so real, upside down, whatever that is, <laughs> you know. I like that. I like whenever your brain has to think, like on one hand, you think, I know what that is. And then you move your, your eyes move over here and you go, oh, but what's that? Like, I kind of like having to figure it out. Do you ever have something, somebody try to tell you a story and you already know the end as soon as they started and it's boring? You know what I mean? You're like, yeah, and then that happened. Okay, I get it. But it's kind of nice whenever you have to figure things out. So that's one of the reasons I like when things don't, don't look like real objects or real places. But then I also, just like you said, sometimes like to put in things that do look real. I like to mix them all together. I guess I like to mix everything together. So in my own art, I make things, I, I try to connect like these parts of myself, the things I'm feeling, because it's sort of like we were talking about with Raja's poetry, like what do you do with your feelings? What do you do with things that are hard? Um, art's a great, how many times have you ever like scribbled when you were angry, you know? It's a good thing to do with your feelings. And I think it's a good thing for everybody else to see also, because whenever somebody else looks at something, they think, well, yeah, I've felt like that, like scribbling real hard before, yeah. I noticed you used a lot of ladders. Yeah, I did, do you like them? Mm -hmm. Me too. <laughs> Yeah, I do use a lot of ladders. So again, I was thinking about the ladders are connectors, right? They put, they make the ground go, are you raising your hand? Oh, okay, here, I'll be here one second. So they help you get from one place to another, kind of like a bridge from the ground up, right? And so I like to make these tiny ladders. This one's made out of paper and thread and glue. So it's kind of falling apart, really delicate. I like to, to make ladders because to me, they kind of make me think of trying to get somewhere, you know? So even though in my drawing, they don't really go from anywhere to anywhere, they just make somebody think of like trying to climb on a little ladder that might not hold you. How does that make you feel? You know, scared a little bit, uncertain a little bit. So it's, one, it's another way of for me anyway, it's kind of a symbol I use to talk about trying to get somewhere and how scary that might be. Or sometimes it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> how many times have you ever thought something was going to go somewhere? You know, you, this was going to make that happen and it didn't? What a bummer. So um, I like to put all of that in my art. And then one of the reasons I decided uh, to have everybody else include their feelings and their experiences was because it made me feel connected to them. Sometimes when you make something, you're sitting all alone, like in your room with your guitar or at your typewriter or your computer or at your drawing pad. And that's nice. It's nice to be alone. But it can be kind of isolating. So this was a way of, um, of including, you know, of connecting me to other people also. Yeah, this one... This one I made a little later and I started putting a lot more words, so they're kind of hiding in there. This one says, home alone, I wonder how did this happen? Is it me? Um, this one, somebody felt connected when people remember something, when they remember something about me, you know, because that makes you feel good. This person feels bad when I feel broke. Isn't that sad? Yeah, this person, I feel connected when I'm in a community of women, kindred spirits. I think that was my mom, honestly. I mean it. Hi, mom. <laughs> yeah, um, this one. I felt like I was behind a plate of glass and everyone else's life was just going on as usual. I think everybody feels like that once sometimes, right? Like everyone's ignoring you, like, you can't, like they can't even hear you, you're behind a plate of glass. I really like it when everything's included, like the things that feel good and the things that feel bad and the things that make sense and the things that don't make sense. I like to include them all and then I like to put a lot of room around it because I think that having a little space makes everything with easy. With a point on it and drew with that and then whenever I drew over top of it, you could see the ridges it made. That was fun, abstract. I like drawing, like sometimes drawing just the marks, like abstract and not trying to draw anything, because it's like I can just, you can, 
you don't have to, you can just, however you feel, go ahead and let that out. You don't have to necessarily make it look like anything. And so then, I kind of like to include little, little tiny things in my art because it, it makes me feel like it's mysterious, you know, and interesting. So this one has a longer ladder. This one's made out of toothpicks and uh, embroidery thread. If you, does anybody like doing tiny little things? Does anybody like making, you guys, some people like it, right? Some people like tiny things. Some people hate tiny things, but I also like tiny things. Like drawing this with all these little tiny bricks. So I'd make like a wall, but this wall couldn't really exist, right? It would fall over. This, this little arch, it couldn't really exist. I like things, that's the, one of the nicest things about art is you can invent everything. You can make things that couldn't really happen, happen in your drawing. This one had a lot to do with nature. People were saying, I felt peaceful and connected sitting alone in nature. When I work in my garden, I feel connected in my garden. Um, kind of going into this little world, but then when you get to the edge, you have to leave for that second, and then you're like, oh, it's the wall. I'm back in this world. And then you're like, oh, I'm back in the drawing. Oh, I'm back in the world. I like to, I guess really anything I can do to sort of make, mix it up. I think it makes it more interesting to me. Okay, let's see, what else? More shares. Have you guys ever seen prayer flags? Has anyone ever heard of that? There are some religions that in Buddhism, I want to say, and maybe some others, where you put like a prayer on a flag and the idea is the wind carries the prayer, you know, to whomever you want that prayer to go to. So I was thinking that these kind of reminded me of those like prayer flags, but they also look kind of like a party, don't they? Interesting. Anyways, let's see. Anything else exciting to look at back here? Here's another mountain. I feel safe and connected when I sit by the sea. Have you guys ever visited the ocean? Yeah? Oh, someday you guys will all visit the ocean. That's cool. Oh, even the lake. Like, even Lake Erie is like that. Like, you look and it's like big bunch of water. Yeah. That, a lot of people said that. And because I do a whole bunch of different mediums, sometimes I test them out first before I use them. So I would test out this brush, or I would test out this big pencil on its side, or I would test out, I think I used an airbrush over here, pastel. And then I decided I liked these pages with all the testers on them. I just liked the colors and everything. And then I was also testing out gluing. So sometimes artists do that, like you, you think you can try it out, like try it out before you do it on your drawing or your painting or whatever. You just try it out separately to work out the kinks. And then when you get it good at it, then you do it on your drawing or your painting or your, your whatever you're making. But um, so I was testing out gluing on these shares and what they looked like, and I decided I liked them. So I just saved all my old scratchy. That's why this paper's all wrinkled and scratchy looking and beat up. And I just uh, made them you know, separate, separate ones. Because I thought they felt a little bit more like a journal. Does anybody keep a journal or a sketchbook for themselves? Yeah? That's cool, good. That's the best place to try things out, is writing. The words are already kind of emotional. You know, it makes you feel a lot of feelings when you read, I feel alone when I visit the cemetery and miss a loved one. That's sad. And so when I would write it in my handwriting, it just looked extra emotional because it was like my handwriting you know but when I typed it it felt a little bit less emotional does that make sense like a little bit more a little bit less like a person and that was kind of made it easier to read yeah that's a good point it's anonymous yeah that's a good point right does it's not a particular person it could be anybody it's interesting, right? Lots of choices. OK, keep on trucking. Don't you like this giant piece of paper? It looks like a face. It does? Oh, yeah. Ooh, with a big smile. Look at this big line. I had to press really hard. I like to break the pencil tip a lot of times when I draw. Like the eyes are far apart. Yeah, lots of times. Our brain likes to see a face because I think it feels good when it can recognize something. Like it has what? It's tongue out. It's tongue out. It does. 